ignore that warning? Well, I, I, the president doesn't disclose details of meetings that he has, which in this case was an hour-long meeting. But it's true that the president made it, President Obama made it known that he wasn't exactly a fan of General Flynn's, uh, which is frankly shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone that, given that General Flynn had worked for President Obama was an outspoken critic of President Obama's shortcomings, specifically as it related to his lack of strategy confronting ISIS and other threats around uh, that, that were facing America. So the, the question that you have to ask yourself really is if President Obama was truly concerned about General Flynn, why didn't he suspend General Flynn's security clearance, which they had just reapproved months earlier? Additionally, why did the Obama administration let Flynn go to Russia for a paid speaking engagement and receive a fee? I mean, there were steps that they could have taken that if, they, if that was truly a concern more than just a person uh, that, that didn't – had bad blood. And I want to follow up on a couple points because you raised the security clearance. But before that, if, if a sitting president raises the name of one individual, why wouldn't that give the president elect pause? I understand what you're saying, the caveats about the fact that he campaigned against Hillary Clinton, et cetera. But wouldn't that give the incoming president pause? Well, I, I think I, – I would not know that I agree with your characterization. You made it clear that he wasn't a fan of his, and I don't think that should have come as a surprise considering the role that General Flynn paid uh, – played in the campaign, criticizing his – didn't give him any pause at all. No. I, I, I think – again, I think you, you – if you know what we knew at the time, which is that the security clearance that he had had been reapproved in April of that year, um, and they took – not only did they reapprove it, uh, but then they took no steps to su suspend it. So the question has to be, what did they do if they had real concerns beyond just not having, you know, not liking him for some of the comments that he made? And it's our understanding, and if you could clarify this, did Mike Flynn not need upgraded security clearance in order to serve as the national security advisor? Oh, he'd been head of the de Defense Intelligence Agency. That's the so same. You vetted him as well, correct? That's the same clearance that the, the security clearance, we went over this a while ago, is the same clearance at any level. Once you get it, you get it for the time that you had. He had had his reinvestigation in April of 2016, um, and the Obama administration took no steps. Not only did they reaffirm that security clearance, they took no steps uh, to suspend it or take any other action. But did you not vet him yourselves? Well, you don't vet on a security clearance. That's, that's what – that's why you get a security clearance. Everyone in the government goes through the same process. So the answer is that those same uh, – that same process worked for General Flynn as it did for me or for anyone else who works here. Um, there's no difference of, of a security clearance once it's issued. Zeke. Thanks, Sean. You said a few minutes ago, Christian, um, what we know is what we knew at the time. So does – knowing what the White House knows now, does the White House, does the President believe that General Flynn should not have had that clearance reissued last year, number one? And number two, does the White House believe that General Flynn was truthful when he filled out uh, his SF-86 for that reinvestigation last year? Well, I'm not going to get into those to those details. It was Obviously, that was something that was adjudicated by the Obama administration uh, in April of 2016. They took no steps to, to, uh, to suspend that. Um, so that's not really a question for us. It's a question for them at that time. No, knowing what you know now, that's in the public Yeah, I think record. the President took appropriate action when he did, once he felt as though uh, General Flynn had uh, misled the Vice President, and he, uh, he took appropriate and decisive action at the time, and he stands by that today. Did his, did his ties to Russia, did his, did his work as, uh, as a registered foreign agent, now registered foreign agent for the government of Turkey, lead to his firing in, in February? Well, again, I, I don't think we're going to re-litigate this. The President made the right decision back then, and he stands by that. Hunter. Thanks, John. Um, the President tweeted this morning that senators on the Intelligence Committee should ask Sally Yates about her role in classified leaks about General Flynn. Does the President have evidence that ties Sally Yates to the Flynn leaks? Why did he tweet that? Well, I think you guys uh, are well aware of the President's concern about spills of, of uh, classified and other sensitive information out into the open. Uh, it's something that should concern every American, and the President's made it very clear uh, for since, his, since he took office, that, that that's a big concern of his. Um, and so the idea that classified information made its way into the press is something that I think, while we're asking all of these questions, is one of the ones that I think the senator should ask. How did that information um, get get out into the, to the open like that? I think that is an equally important question that, frankly, isn't getting asked. But does the president believe that Sally Yates was the leaker in this? I, again, I think that the, the tweet speaks for itself. What he's saying is that the Senate should ask those questions. Yeah. Thanks, Sean. Ahead of her testimony today, does President Trump believe Sally Yates is a trustworthy source of information? Well, that's not up for us to decide. I mean, that is up to the Senate to decide whether or not 
what she what she doesn't we'll let, we'll have to wait and see what that and, and following up on Sarah's question it seemed that the president was implying that Sally Yates may have had something to do with the leaked information to newspapers is that what he was implying I think the tweet speaks for itself I don't think sometimes you don't have to read too much into it Richard thanks a lot Sean did Sally Yates have to run any of her planned testimony by the general counsel's office <clears throat> that she'll deliver later this afternoon I'm not aware of it no and also um, do you have any reason to doubt that uh, her testimony, which will be under oath, will be truthful before the Senate uh, subcommittee. I, I have no. I mean, no. I, I would assume that when you raise your right hand and uh, agree to tell the truth and nothing but the truth, that you'll you'll do that. That's the whole reason that you pledge. Okay. Two questions as it relates to uh, President Trump and former President Obama. Back to that November conversation. Were there specific reasons given, and if so, as as it relates to Michael Flynn, and if so, was that based on private information? I, I don't know the answer to that. I, I know that, like I said, um, he passed along exactly what I mentioned to Kristen at the outset, and that, that's, that's all. Sean, 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 secondly, Sean, secondly. Michael. Two, two clarifications. On the signing statements, broadly, not just the subject of the HBCUs, um, are you saying that the president was not aware of that very long, of the details of that very long signing statement? It was just something done at, at OLC? And no, 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 that's not, I, that's not, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, yeah. No, the, the president's obviously aware of what happened. The question that was asked is, it is a process. It, it, it has happened for administrations going back, you know, generations, I'm sure. I don't have this precise nature of when signing statements came into to being, but this is a, a normal pro forma piece that goes along with, with, um, with a bill signing to make sure that the executive branch's intent uh, is as understood. But a lot of the things that were in that signing statement were things that were essentially carryovers from things that Obama had also objected to. Um, and right. so, but, but the president and the senior staff here was aware of what those things were and approved those of things being yes. in the Okay. Second question on the uh, Flynn and the security clearances. You, you guys have made both from the podium here and also the president made a big deal of this question of the Obama people uh, gave him the clearance or re upped the clearance right. earlier. Um, are you suggesting now, knowing what you guys know with the with with hindsight and whatever, are you saying that they should have? You believe that the Obama administration should have denied him his clearance back in April, based on the information that that you're now aware of, uh, connections with Russia, et cetera, et cetera? Are you suggesting that they should have denied it? No. What I'm suggesting is is that you can't have it both ways. The the folks who are coming out and saying Obama, you know expressed some concern about Flynn. Well, number one, it was pretty expected. This is a guy who uh, was very outspoken in his criticism of, of President Obama's policies. So the idea that President Obama, uh, you know, didn't, didn't, didn't like the guy doesn't seem shocking. But the point that you have to ask yourself is if you, if the Obama administration or under the Obama administration, if they reissued a high, that one of the highest security clearances that you can get, knowing what they knew then, and then didn't do anything to take a proactive step to suspend it in any way, shape, or form. The question you have to ask yourself is, if they were concerned, why didn't they take any steps? We, they're the ones who had, at that point, all the access and all the knowledge to everything that was on his SF-86 security clearance, not us. So if President Obama or anyone else, frankly, in the government was concerned, the question should be asked, what did they do, and if nothing, then why not if they really truly were concerned? I think that is a fair question. Dave, 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 Dave. Over the weekend, Sean, over the weekend, uh, North Korea uh, detained the fourth U.S. citizen. Um, are, you, are you concerned that they're trying to escalate tensions even further? Uh, do you consider these Americans hostages? And what are you doing diplomatically, back channel or otherwise, to try and get them released? Yeah, obviously this is concerning. Uh, we're well aware of it. Uh, and we're going to work through the Embassy of Sweden that has a facility in North Korea, or an embassy in North Korea, uh, through our State Department to seek the release of the individuals there. But I would refer you to the State Department on that. Sean, sure. sure, thanks very much. Um, just to follow up on your answer on Afghanistan, you mentioned ISIS, but you didn't mention the Taliban. Should we read that to mean no, that no. the focus will be on ISIS? No, it's, it's to defeat both the ISIS and Taliban. Uh, I mean, there's no, it, it's to make sure that we put our national security interests first uh, and defeat all of those uh, see, folks that seek to do us harm. Are you willing to negotiate with the Taliban? I, I, look, let's, I think right now the whole point of this is the president is receiving uh, a plan and guidance from his national security team as he had asked for. 
Uh, that guidance is coming forward uh, as we speak. He's continuing to meet with them, um, and there will be further updates from the Department of Defense as we move forward. The, uh, as I mentioned at the outset, the President or the Vice President has an event. I want to make sure the pool has time to set for it. 